Hey, what's up everyone? In this problem, we're going to evaluate this improper integral. We're going to go through the process of trying to see if we get an answer. So if we work this out and we get an answer, we say that the interval converges. If we don't get an answer, if we don't get a number, then we say that it diverges. So solution. So whenever you have an improper integral with an infinity in one of the limits of integration, the first thing you can do is you can replace the infinity with a symbol. So I like to use the letter B. And then we let b go to infinity. Then here we have the 3. Then here we have 1 over x minus 1 to the fourth dx. So again, you can replace the infinity symbol with the letter and then just let that letter approach infinity. To do this integral, we can make a u substitution. So we'll let u equal to x minus 1. And that's because usually it's a good idea to let u be what's inside the power and then du is equal to dx. Okay. We can also change the limits of integration. Whenever you make a substitution and you have a definite integral, it's good practice to change the limits of integration. So let's see, let's do the top one first. So when x is equal to b, then we take the x and we, we, we take the b and we plug it into u. So it'd be u is equal to b minus 1. And then when x is equal to 3, that's the bottom limit of integration, the lower limit, u is equal to 3 minus 1, so u is equal to 2. So these here are going to be our new limits of integration. So again, generally, whenever you have a definite integral and um, you, you make a u substitution, it's good form, it's good practice to change the limits. So b is approaching infinity. And we still have the definite integral. So instead of the 3, we're going to have, let's see, when x is 3, u is 2. These are u values now, so this is 2. And um, instead of b, right, instead of b, when x is b, u is b minus 1. So we have b minus 1. And this is going to be 1 over, and we said x minus 1 was u, so this is u to the fourth du. To integrate this, we can bring the u upstairs. So we still have the limit sign. So limit b goes to infinity. It's a lot of notation to get used to. And then 2 to b minus 1. And we can write this as u to the negative 4 du. Good stuff. So now we can use the power rule to integrate. So again, we still have the limit sign. So limit b goes to infinity. And we're integrating, so we're going to drop the integral sign, we're going to drop the du. So we're adding 1 to the exponent. So that, that will be u to the negative 3 over negative 3. And we're going from 2 to b minus 1. So again, this is the limit as b goes to infinity. And this is negative 1 third times 1 over u cubed, rewriting it, right? Pulling out the, the 3 and writing it as negative 1 third. And again, we're going from 2 to b minus 1. All right, now we're ready to plug in these numbers. So the first number you plug in is the top number. Okay, so we have limit. b goes to infinity. So we have negative 1 third. I'm going to leave the negative 1 third on the outside. So it'll be 1 over b minus 1 cubed minus 1 over, and then we're plugging in 2, so 2 cubed, which is 8, but I'll leave it as 2 cubed. So again, first you plug in the b minus 1. Boom, we did that. We got this. Check. Subtract, and then you plug in the 2. We did that. Boom, we got this. Check. Good stuff. Now we can take the limit. We can finally take the limit. <laughs> b is going to infinity, so um, this piece here is going to approach 0, because when b gets really, 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 really big, this gets really, really close to zero, right? Because you have a B on the bottom, so it's going off to zero. So as B gets big, this fraction gets smaller and smaller, so it goes to zero. So we're left with negative one-third. Now we drop the limit sign. Zero minus one-eighth, right? Two cubed is eight. Negative and negative is positive, so this is going to be uh, one over three times eight is 24. So we got one over 24. So uh, that would be the answer. And in this case, we would say that the integral converges because we got the limit exists. If the limit does not exist, then we say it diverges. So recap, this was an example of an improper integral. It's improper because it has an infinity 
in the upper limit of integration. And whenever you have infinity or negative infinity in one of the limits of integration, you can replace it with uh, the letter, a, a variable. I like to use B. And then just let, let B approach that symbol. In this case, we're approaching infinity. There's other improper integrals, too. For example, if you look at negative 2 to 2, 1 over x dx. This is also an improper integral. In this case, it's improper because it has what's called an infinite discontinuity. So infinite discontinuity at 0, at 0. So it's got a vertical asymptote at 0, basically. That, that makes it uh, an infinite discontinuity. This one's a little bit different. So two ways integrals can be improper, right? They can have infinity or negative infinity in one of the limits of integration, or they can have what's called an infinite discontinuity. Anyways, I guess I should stop the video. <laughs> Let's keep rambling on about discontinuities. Uh, thanks for watching. That's it.